Welcome to Whole Back Rack Podcast. My name is Jessica Hare. I operate Hare Hollow Farm and we breed boas, balls, and select colubrids. Hi, I'm Jenna King. I operate ASM Royal Tails and I breed high end ball pythons. We want to share our journey navigating herpetoculture and are dedicated to promoting biohazard safety for all species. And we would love you to answer the question what's in your whole back rack? 37. Whoop, whoop. Woo! All right, I have a fun question I thought of uh, some days ago that I was going to ask you. This is a summertime fun question. So I need you to rank these melons in order of desirability. Watermelon, cantaloupe, honeydew, and boobies. Boobies. (laughs) Hmm. Cantaloupe. What? Watermelon. And what last one? Cantaloupe or honeydew. Honeydew. Honeydew is always last. You'd always rather have the other two melons, three I dis- melons. I first. disagree firmly. They don't Firm, call cantaloupe yes. musk melon for nothing. This is a not safe for work podcast. So if you are listening at work, maybe you should put in some headphones. Or if your kids are nearby. Did you know Shane Kelly, sponsor of the Whole Back Rack podcast, hatched his first clutch of hog noses last week? The pairing I saw was a snow so head exanthic. Individuals. Yeah, he hit Xanthix. I think the same boy is going to a hit albino in a later clutch. That's still in the incubator. Yeah, so check out Shane, Small Town. You can find him on Instagram or YouTube. And he sponsors our show still. <laughs> this is an addendum for last week. It was in the, the show notes, but I just didn't say it. If there is no particular advantage to maternal incubation, except for some sort of speculative maybe advantage, there's no reason to give up the benefit of not having, you know, a, a potential transmission event between the mother and the babies for nidovirus or any other kind of virus that isn't vertically transmitted but could be transmitted by contact once they're born to do maternal incubation instead just for fun. Go ahead and artificially incubate everybody. And if you want to maternally incubate it, that's fine, but we can't test for everything. So there's an exposure risk there that we don't know the full ramifications of. Is it weird that we didn't cover that last week? A little. Yeah, I was surprised that we, we missed that. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I, I, mean, I almost like assume that everyone understands that, but then like people will listen to the episode for the first time and they've never been you know, beaten over the head with it 13 times yet. So let's beat them again. Have you put an offer on a new house? Everybody, you need to update everybody because they haven't heard. Well, I spent too long last week talking about it. It was kind of boring to me when I listened to it uh, after the fact. But the answer is we've got an offer on this house and put an offer in on the next house. And we will move and maybe not divorce each other. So that's pretty good. <laughs> that's really great because both of us going through a divorce at the same time. Double divorce. Double divorce is not acceptable. <laughs> so you'll have to wait. <laughs> All right, I'll try. Today's topic is about our big box pet stores bad for the reptile hobby. And I worked at a big box pet store long ago in the summer of 2006, the summer of 2007, a long time ago. So Jana, before you had snakes as pets, what did you think of big box pet stores? Big box pet stores are the, are the shit. I loved big box pet stores. I I still might. I loved going to them as a kid. I loved taking my kids. Sometimes we would just go walk around and look at all the cool shit. I did not have any kind of prejudice towards them prior to becoming a breeder. Do you feel like you gained a little bit of prejudice against them after becoming a breeder? Because that's what the hobby's perception of it kind of is. I think it swung, yeah, totally the other direction where I was like, fuck big box pet stores. And they're like giving everybody the wrong shit with their red light bulbs and their you know, heat rocks and their crappy substrates and their poor information. And so you just get real jaded real fast. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I have appropriately corrected at this point, which we can talk about after we talk about your experience. Mm -hmm. I think the the nuanced view ends up being, as always, probably the correct view. No, I feel pretty good about my, my nuanced view. It felt pretty shitty to hate on a place where I have lots of really good memories. So... I'm, I'm glad that I've come come back around. Full circle. Jana's come full circle. Full circle. <laughs> it's the circle of life. Anyway. Wow, we got a full. 
Lion King well, edition. Uh, yes, nice. you're, you're that welcome was my, for one that. One of my favorite movies when I was little. Was it your favorite? Mine movie? too. Know, yeah, it's the first movie I remember seeing in theater when I was five. Oh yeah, I definitely saw that one in theater. I saw Lion King was ninety four. What year was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles three? Ninety three. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. Release. Turtles in Time. Turtles in Time. No, I knew which one you were talking mm-hmm. about. <laughs> yeah, that was 93. Yeah, I saw that. I saw Jurassic Park. So I must have seen movies when I was four. Is that fucking weird? That's no. weird that you fucking remember. No, I wasn't remember. four. No, you weren't four. You were five, five six, seven. Seven. And, seven I, I, and I saw Land for Time in theaters too. So I would have been two. Whoa. No. No, I think Lion King was my first son. We were a big-ass family, so it was a pretty big deal that I got to go. Because, you know, I was the youngest, so usually I can just leave that shit at home. <laughs> <laughs> I love Lion King, so can't wait till uh, I become a lion one day. That'll, that's what I've been looking forward to for a long time. Girl power. All right, back to pet stores. I worked at Petco, and I th- Petco and PetSmart are different, but they have largely very similar business models. That's why it's, if you like, squint you can't tell the difference half the time Correct. when you walk into one or walk into another one so that's I why they spell it pet smo <laughs> yeah that, so like largely i've talked to other people who've worked at other at pet smart and they're very similar i do remember though even back in 06 or 07 petco was jealous of pet smart like it was pining at pet smart's sort of market penetration and they <laughs> gave this this stupid little hand drawn map of like how they were gonna beat PetSmart by like doing things better and it's really funny. I grew and, up neck with a pet coat closer to me than a pet smart and so that is my reference point, but I definitely think that pet smart is further reaching all the way around. Yeah, they seem to be in every uh strip it's mall like Petco, across yeah, from a Petco's uh, like the the younger brother. Right, but I actually think Petco I have to double check, but Petco might have predated it wherever, whatever region it was from. But they're both, but PetSmart has more market share and maybe it's doing a better job. I don't know. At this point, it's been a long time since I've been in either one. Let's go. Let's journey back in time. What was Jana doing in the summer of 2006? This was before the economic collapse, but we were getting ready to do it. 2006, I was going to school for medical assisting. And I was working for a Kellogg's factory making fruit leather. Whoa. Called Stretch Island Fruit Leather. Whoa. Um, that yeah, was so fun. I was, it was so fun. It, I was working full time and going to school full time and partying. And it was it was a good year. But you didn't think about Petco, did you? I didn't think about <laughs> any pets other than my beloved Siberian Husky, who was puppy at that time. Oh, puppy. So 2006 would make this post the Boas finding out they had arena and a large percentage of them dying, right? Mm, This was a bad year for you. Well, that happened in 2005, but like I still had some of them left, but I dropped out of school because all the Boas dying was very bad for my mental health in the middle of a semester and just failed all the classes and just left. So I moved. Spoiler alert. Don't worry. She goes back. (laughs) No, it was all for naught anyway. So I moved to Manassas, where my grandma lived and just like squatted in her house and then decided to work at Peco for chuckles or whatever. So I had the last living boas with me at her house, 10 of them, whatever, the ones that were okay-ish. So that's just, this is just like the context of the collection. And I worked at the Manassas Peco. And the Manassas Petco is funny because it's right across the street from the Shell gas station where one of the beltway shooters killed somebody in the shell gas station what state is this manassas virginia okay and that part's not funny about the beltway shooter but we always like snuck around and smoke cigarettes in the bushes behind the the peco and try to figure out where if he could have shot from that parking lot and we ended up deciding you know a bunch of 20 somethings up to no good that he could have used our parking lot as like the best one which is fucked up so in general and I'm hoping you agree. There's no pet store that like wakes up in the morning and is like, man, I want to just murder animals. I just hope I can make as many animals as possible suffer today. Like there's, that's not anybody's motivation. They want to make money. And if they're just killing animals, usually it's because of some sort of ignorant beliefs or process. Yeah, killing animals isn't good for anybody's bottom line. No. And in general, maybe you can agree or disagree. I think the 
big box pet stores are better looking and smelling and maybe have why are you texting me <laughs> why is your sound on <laughs> i don't know Chris, chris turn it on I'm sending it for um, your use of the the thing, you know. What thing? The, the thumbnail. Oh, do you want to? I'm assuming those are pictures of you from 2007. Do you want to be in the thumbnail from 2007? You need to find something from you from 2007, oh, and we can both. I don't know if there is a picture of me from 2000. I can you probably. could just you could just use your uh, cos cosplay. <laughs> That's from like 2015. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Bottom line, it's not good to kill everything. Okay, you've been in like gross mom and pop pet stores, right? Not much. I actually largely stay away from them because they're gross. There, there's right. one by us that's really gross. Mm-hmm. There are very good reptile specialty shops, very good mom and pop, just pet stores, and then there are the gross ones. And I think the average Petco is leaps and bounds above the average gross mom and pop pet store. What do you think about that? Uh, my experience <coughs> has been Petco or Pet Smart. Petco and Pet Smart are miles and miles and miles <laughs> above <laughs> the conditions of the mom and pop by me. Um, I only went in it one time and I never need to return. <laughs> what did it smell like? Tell me what it smelled like. It smells like my ball python room when I've been on vacation for four days. Okay. Do you remember when Walmart sold live animals that weren't fish when they sold rodents? Nope. But I can imagine because that's what they, that's what that store smelled like is mm-hmm. dirty long, rodents. Long, long ago. Dirty ball pythons. Oh, I, I should have referenced my ASFs used to live in my ball python room. And so when I was gone for four days, and come came back that's like dirty rodents and dirty snakes at the same time mm-hmm. and like dead fish and tanks and yeah, yeah you walk and in like and, and like plants the smell makes your it makes your nose literally yeah. burn and bo of course <laughs> they have bo you know <laughs> yes because they've got the like grungy high school students that don't love themselves so and there's a pair like who's a been plucking room. himself to death for the last 15 years, <sighs> screaming existential rage into the void, and he's just there still. Yeah. And there's yeah. some kind of like old big steak that's just jammed not into loved. a 40 gallon <laughs> on a green repti carpet. Yeah, yes. Yes. So what I'm saying is, Petco and PetSmart obviously better, even yes. with the, all of their faults. Take them in a heartbeat. Seem great. Sign me up. The people who like really shit on big box stores, they're not like living in a world with any kind of normal perspective of how much better it is than what it used to be. Like I can remember the shit scary pet store that was in Martinsburg, West Virginia, would regularly sell ball pythons, doomerals, boas, boas, candoya out of the same cage. Like they would all be in there together. Quint- cool. Quintuple co housing. And then you just pick the one you want. <laughs> <laughs> and then take it home so it can die <laughs> <laughs> right away too uh, so yeah fuck that i'm gonna say mean things about big box pet stores but i that is still true to me is like let's keep it in context that these aren't that bad to me correct uh, the first one we're gonna shit a little right here guys but keep in mind that it's still okay all right the training was absolute dog shit did you ever work at like an Arby's or a McDonald's? I worked at McDonald's. Okay. Yeah. And they sit you down for like a VHS tape type thing that they, or maybe DVD at that point. They, and they're like, this is McDonald's culture, blah, blah, blah. And maybe you work with someone a little bit for a couple hours here and there and you get used to your stations. Like that level yeah, yeah. of training. It wasn't even that mm-hmm. much. The training was like a 10 minute quiz on a web portal that they handed you the answers for so you could get certified in each of the animal types that's how you were trained to tell people how to take care of their animals yeah because everybody's paying attention to that 10 minute boring ass (laughs) quiz sheet (laughs) you do like shadow someone for a day to learn like the animal care but none of it's particularly hard and if you were to take that and like tell someone to go do that you know that might be okay for their pet guinea pig yeah, we need to change the bedding once a week and we spot clean every day and we change the water and we give them vitamin C and let them chew on stuff. 
That would probably keep a guinea pig alive, but that won't keep alive a baby ball python. A chameleon. Yeah, or a fucking <laughs> chameleon. So the training was shit, and I think they knew that. And, like, the manager would, like, rely on people who already knew things because the managers weren't trained in any sort of animal care at all, really. The vendors were between, like, really good and, like, terrible. Like, for some reason, the, the rodents probably didn't come in this condition, but half of our rodent deliveries would be, like, they just stacked, like, cardboard boxes <laughs> of rodents in the back of a box truck. So sometimes when the truck would back up, they had, like, driven really fast and, like, break. And so all the piles of stacked rodent boxes would have been, like, flipped over. So there was more than one time where we opened the back of the box truck and there were mice running. Fucking And they're like, catch it. And there's a fucking Siberian hamster because they would just explode when they and then it fell over. Yeah. That was highly <laughs> regular. <laughs> <laughs> well, and most people, especially people who aren't snake breeders, they're not just going to like reach out and grab a rat over a hamster. <laughs> no, and the poor dudes, they're just like contracted dudes that go to some, you know, vendor somewhere. I think he was in like the Carolinas. They pick up a truck of rodents and then go and drop it off at multiple Petco's or PetSmart. Well, take luck. <laughs> yeah. And so there was no heating or cooling in that thing. They were supposed to drive all night and deliver them in the morning, but sometimes... I don't think we ever had a bunch of deads, but we had deads of other kinds of things. And then, I don't know who did it, but I'm pretty sure it was Reptiles Industries or Reptiles by Mac or somebody big like that who did our just our leopard geckos. That was its own vendor. They were always shipped second day air U.S. Postal Service because you could still ship lizards USPS, which is crazy. Oh, it took two days? Yeah. And so we got those dead. They were just like, take luck? (laughs) in the winter a lot like maybe every third shipment wow yeah so like if you're like oh the the total suffering is increasing yes it was but a lot of them those ones came in very good in good condition but the just the the like willy-nilly shipping was always crazy you couldn't stop an order if you had sold that skew down it just came sometimes some things were like I had to go in an inventory, and if it's, I said we had zero leopard geckos left, they would automatically like institute an order and send you more leopard geckos. Even if it was snowing 20 outside. degrees outside, or, you know, it was a, literally a snow day and they couldn't ship it, because the post office doesn't give a shit. Yeah, so right. that part was bad, but most of those came in okay, because they were taken care of wherever they were from. Um, so you're saying it was a good vendor, the shipping just needs some work. Yeah, and maybe they do it different now. This is a long I was time say, ago. That's probably improved. Because yeah, I do notice so. that ours has seasonal animals. So, like, in the winter, there are less reptiles and things. And I don't think it's because they can't get them. I think it has to do with shipping. You're, is it a pet co, not a pet smart? It's a pet co, yeah. Yeah, things were changing as even as I was there, where they're like, we want to store or, ha- you know, bring in less unusual skews. I tried to order a green tree python basically every time. Because some, <laughs> somebody did you gave, ever actually get one? No, someone gave me the keys to the cupboard, and so I was allowed to order <laughs> whatever I wanted if I could get it. So I ordered like very weird things, any skew, no matter how expensive. I ordered like way too many lorikeets because it's like my favorite kind of bird, and they're hilarious. You know, hopped up on nectar all the time, screaming. <laughs> what are they called? Lorikeets. Google that. Google a rainbow lorikeet. Your life will be rainbow. Laura. Oh my gosh, it's amazing! Imagine that as a baby, and it loves you, but it's also high on sugar constantly. So it wants to just jump and roll around, and they would all line up. So we had a lot of baby. It's like the kitten version, like the the Lisa Frank kitten version. Oh yeah, it's a hundred percent Lisa Frank bird. It's wild, and they're this is amazing. I am the... saving this video to watch later. <laughs> They're so like, you know, the other birds would be like, what are you doing? Like the other babies. So babies that would be playing, they'd be like, this bird is on cocaine. Because they, they're like nectar feeders, so they need a high percent sugar in their diet anyway. Holy balls. Can so you even would, get those now because they're from Australia? No, they're already like here. So you oh, can. Okay. So none of our birds were like wild caught. That was bad. They were all from specific bird vendors. But some vendors did parakeets canaries and doves and some vendors did the bigger parrots but the bigger parrots were like more expensive skews 
and you didn't buy, get everyone you ordered. But I would order any fucking lorikeet I could. And one time, one, at one point, we had like four lorikeets, and I was like, just keep ordering them. They're hilarious. <laughs> they cost like did you just like put them on your tail. Oh, did you like put them on your shoulder and just like walk around the store with them? So you weren't allowed to take baby birds out of the bird room or any oh. bird. But there was like a. This is an old, old fucking petco. So it had a bird room with a door. I was gonna say our bird room. I think went out with like the. I mean, the late 90s, I think they quit doing the bird room and it turned into like the Humane Society room or something. Yeah. So the bird room makes sense if you're selling a lot of big, expensive birds because you want somebody to play with it in like a safe space. You can tell Petco was going away from that. They mostly just have little conures now and parakeets and finches. Yeah, we had parakeets growing up. Yeah. Boring. You want a lorikeet. Wow. It's like I a... feel ripped off that <laughs> ours did not carry lorikeets. <laughs> but if you say they were fifteen hundred bucks. Yeah, probably more now. But Yeah, yeah. They're... You know, parakeets are like thirty bucks. <laughs> yeah, parakeets are a fine pet. Lorikeets are the next level pet. So but they gave me permission to order things, which is a mistake. Okay. For the most part you couldn't get what you wanted anyway even if because we never were told like what our store's budget was for most things they were just like why would so, like you... some big brother was like signing off on your orders yes and then also they had to have the inventory too and there was a problem where we had too many fish tanks and not enough like fish sales to justify filling the tanks the whole way so there's like a chicken and egg problem where like if half your tanks are empty because you don't sell you know 800 units of fish a week you can't buy that that would have made it full looking at some point in the week we could only have whatever so there was some point where we had to like tear out i don't know like 20 tanks and sumps in the middle of the year randomly because we had an old style store so that is a weird aside but as always the thing that you sell the most of over there is like feeder fish not necessarily yeah. like the aesthetically pleasing ones. But if you look at new Petco's or PetSmarts, they don't have that many tanks. They might have like, I don't know, 30 or something. Yeah, it's like a lot less, like probably, what, like 80% less than they did when we were kids? Yeah, like you could walk through tanks, tanks on both sides, and you're in like a little cave type of operation. Yeah, I know, I remember. Yeah, that apparently... It's not like that name anymore. Right, they don't want to do that, and they couldn't sell the fish to make that make sense in whatever way that they're working behind the scenes. So they yeah, now they have away like from that. Dry, dry goods rather than uh, animal inventory. Yeah, because it turns out dry goods is where all the margins are. Right. right. The animals die. So. And, and the dry goods don't die. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we had dropped off pets constantly. And then I got banned I see, pets. that's so interesting. I didn't know Petco or PetSmart took drop-offs we did it so much that we had a form where we could rehome like you would relinquish the animal and then that animal would be rehomable with the same dumb like rehome form that we did for sales that's how often it was interesting see like as a kid growing up i never thought like if i can't take care of my animal i'm gonna just drop it off at petco like interesting yeah, I think that people learned that from mom and pop pet stores, which would do like a weird revolving door thing where they would sell someone a snake, get it back in two years later or an iguana or something like terrible pet, savannah. If it was in okay condition or just shit condition, whatever, they would just resell it. So they were used to that sort of process. And so instead of just like throwing all these random animals, mostly small rodents, by the way, like guinea pigs, some rabbits, but mostly guinea pigs, hamsters, mice. That's most of what people abandoned. So you would just put them in, just out on the floor? No, it couldn't mix with our animals. But if it still had like an enclosure or whatever, we would just be like free to good home. I took a lot oh, okay. of them. Oh, like, okay. So you wouldn't even like sell them or anything? No, we couldn't sell them. We just Could to... you take them home and then <coughs> sell them? Or was that frowned upon? Oh, yeah. You know what I did to them? What? I fed them to snakes. I was just going to say, if that's a lot of hamsters, you could feed those to boas, right? Yeah. Guinea pigs. So like oh, most, that's going to make some of our listeners cry. They're delicious. I mean, in retrospect, it's probably not that good of an idea. But those were all boas that had a rhinovirus. So like if they had gotten a weird worm from somebody's... They were already destined for the yard. Yeah. So uh, I probably wouldn't do it now. But I, And also, there was a decent amount of like lizards and snakes and stuff. But not people do not give two shits about pet rodents. Let me just put it that way. 
We would get a snake like once every two months or a, a, a lizard. We got veiled chameleons once, so I had a veiled chameleon for a while. Basically, I like started to accumulate pets in like a separate room that were abandoned pets to the store. Like some of them, like we basically all, we mostly didn't rehome them. We just sort of doled them out between mm-hmm. employees. That's rad. That's really rad. <laughs> So I, this now is, I feel bad that I worked at McDonald's where you, you know, <laughs> doling out fries. I should have worked at Petco. Uh, but then you have a bunch of like weird animals you don't know the history of and you're like rescuing or rehabbing or rehoming. So this is the time I've had like the most kinds of animals at one time. None of those animals were ever like a sweet, let me air quote this one, deal. It's like you didn't get like, it's a not. A green treatment, I thought. <laughs> yeah. And, and it wasn't like the age where morphs were common because it's still like morph ball pythons or even morph boas. Right, 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 so right, right. So basically getting normal everything. Did have like crested right. geckos at this time. I ran a colony of Siberian hamsters, which is weird. They're assholes, by the way. They're like the worst pets of all time. Fuck those things. That's probably why you had so many. <laughs> <laughs> People would drop off, try to drop off kittens and dogs, but that's the only thing we like drew the line on. It's like take it to the humane society now, because it you can't have like a kitten that needs milk waiting around for right. an employee to get off of work. So right. we did exactly. cut that shit out. But you'd be surprised how many animals are dropped off at Petco or PetSmart, and I, I they might have changed how they do things in different places. But what I've read online, that's still sort of how it goes. Or like if people abandon stuff in the store. You know, some employees get first dibs or whatever. I was a real fucking Two bitch. People so, like, I usually got most of the uh... abandoned pets to pet co. Oh, it does say, I think adoption first, but should the need arrive, Petco will gladly assist you in finding a home or take back any companion am- animal in good health. I don't know if they still have the form, but we actually had like a relinquishment form. Like, if we couldn't refund someone, but they didn't want it anymore. Better than them throwing in the dumpster or something. So it's probably still a thing. Yeah, you almost would have to... If you were going to make a pet store, you would almost need a adoption corner a la Snake Discovery. Because it's just... Right. It fucking happens. Even if you don't this want This is kind of giving me, like, Snake Discovery vibes. Because she said she also had the keys to the kingdom and could order whatever she wanted. Did she work at PetSmart? can't remember if she worked at pet smart or pet co but she also had ordering rights and would order all kinds of really cool yeah stuff. they made me team lead which is a mistake by the way and then i just <laughs> took over from there and i was like ah. so i i did all of scheduling i did all of ordering all of inventory i worked nights and smoked cigarettes constantly so i was like a real degenerate. that's amazing and i was like in charge amazing. of the reptile section I ended up dating the fish guy which is pretty obvious you know Weird, Wait, but it the was fish right. guy wasn't the fish guy isn't your husband. No, okay, pre husband. As always, corporate is trying to standardize the care, and so people that are dumb off the streets getting minimum wage could come in and not fuck up too bad. So they would actually give you planograms for the animal and their care, like in their little sort of prefab setups. Yeah. But some of it was wrong, so it caused problems. So at that time, and I don't think it's still true, I think they use Cocoa Core now, but they made us use Calci Sand for Bearded Dragons and Leopard Geckos. And we all know what happens when that we do. Yeah. They get impacted. I would just like, if they weren't there very long, they would be fine. But the longer the inventory stayed in stock, the more likely it was to be impacted. And despite all the dumb things this company does, it would pay for us to take them to the vet. So I also did all the vet runs, and I took them to, ironically enough, Dr. Scott Stahl of Seas Reptiles in Vienna, Virginia, famous reptile vet, but he was our closest exotics vet, too. So I took him <laughs> multiple rounds of bearded dragons, leopard lots, geckos with lots of stuff. <laughs> that were impacted, and I'm like, can you tell Petco to change the planogram? And he's like, I've tried. They don't really care right now. Maybe later they'll work on it. And so eventually I just like, to my manager, I'm like, hey, listen, it takes me two or three hours with traffic and waiting and two or three hundred dollars of PECO money to treat a a totally preventable problem. We could instead just put them on another substrate. (laughs) And he's like, okay, sure. Sounds great. So I did. And it was fine. Right. I think we used, uh, even though that is disgusting, repti carpet. At least they couldn't eat it. Like that They're was not eating it. An right, acceptable right, right, right. surface for other kinds of animals. 
We used cocoa yeah. core for like, or repti bark or whatever for wet stuff like ball pythons and emperor scorpions and stuff like that. But the dry stuff, they wanted it on Kelsey sand because they thought they could sell it because it's red or pink or whatever dumb shit. Yeah, because it's a fun <coughs> color like the rocks in a, in a turtle aquarium. Yeah. So that I was mean, I remember dumb. being a kid. The, the pretty colors were, were the sellers. I know. Well, it just the Kelsey sand fucking killed, killed them. It killed them. Yep. Yep, yeah. it did. So we also, you know, the, like the reptile display it's like a big unit mm -hmm. with with like drawers. There was no like independent control of anything. It was just on all the time. And you could turn the lights off at night and on in the morning. But you couldn't night drop or see if the temperature was wrong or like there was heat independently on each level, but you couldn't do anything about it if it was like 100 degrees or 60. Just was whatever it was. Just did whatever it wanted to do. <laughs> I, I Good luck. And most of the time, it was, it was okay ish, right? Like you're like, eh, it's probably somewhere between 70 and 90. I guess that's okay ish. But, yes. But in the winter, it was awfully cold just in the whole building. So those ball pythons weren't doing that good, is what I'm saying. There's other issues like we sold betas in cups instead of in, you know, in filtered, you know, container situation, which we were supposed to clean the cups once a week, like do water changes on the whole cup, but it didn't happen always. Once no a one week. does. They don't. They just die. It's so sad. It makes me sad. Does PetSmart still have cups in Petco? I haven't been in a while. Yep. Okay. A good they, they still do the exact store same thing. will have like a beta wall. Where there will be like a little, you know, one gallon containers, but they all drain into a sump and it gets filtered in the sump and then like it waterfalls back correct. through. That is the correct way to sell for public Keep betas. male betas. They can't see each other, yes. but you can see them. Nope. It looks really hot. The and big it, box stores still have the little teeny tiny cups. Oh, yeah. The grew on lids. That's not good for betas, everybody. Hey, to the employee, these ones, they're like, okay, they just take them and chuck them in the trash in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. They need That's at least weekly great. water changes in that Super. small of a volume of water. That was a separate vendor too. Betas came from one vendor. Coldfish um, and plants came from another vendor like uh, rosies and goldfish. And then obviously the tropical stuff and the, the marine stuff all came from a separate vendor. It's crazy how many fucking vendors there are for a pet store. Don't ever have a pet store. It's really hard. It sounds like to me because <laughs> you're having to like track down all these people for all these kinds of random perishable ass inventory terrible business model i don't know why anybody does it we sold heat rocks uh we had issues with like the chiller tank just basically being always chronically overstocked and like goldfish dying by the dozens a day and we would just scrape dead bodies off of a filter every night that's <laughs> pretty cool uh, we did have a dedicated <laughs> dead animal freezer in the back it had a lock on it. Oh my gosh. So Why did it have a lock on it so nobody could accidentally open it? Yeah, so only like the team leads and the manager had it. And there was a little black body bag special for animal oh. bodies. Oh, oh no. Oh no. <laughs> so no, could... the little black bag. It's so funny, actually, in retrospect. I should not be laughing. This is terrible. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and so they would like take these little dead bags of animals we never kill anything like that actually has like a a lot of sentience like a big parrot or whatever but remember how the the rodents would be tossed all around this box truck with no heat or whatever oh, basically cool. some percent of every hamster coming in would get you know swamp ass so like chronic diarrhea from the stress of being transported so poorly yes and that would just been caused by like just stress just stress so we would take the fucking hamsters to the doctor stall and get antibiotics. And they, there was a little quarantine room in the back. We would set them up. Some of them would make it. Some of them wouldn't. So a little fucking hammy would have to go in the black bag. Go into the freezer. Under lock and key. And then some weird redneck couple would come every two months. And like stealthily empty the uh, freezer of death. Take it away. <laughs> Which I've heard. Not all Petco's Pet Smarts do that. Some of them will just chuck it in the trash. In the dumpster and i'm like don't dump it in the dumpster it sounds like a good way for like 
was doing with the little black bag. <laughs> the black bags would be better than... Oh my god, you know what else we had? I forgot about this until just now. But we had a crazy cat lady who would feed cats around our dumpster. And we were trying to shoo her and the cats away like, yeah. But she kept coming back. Because, <laughs> oh. uh, you know, like, I guess she started feeding there because maybe a former employee was feeding feral cats. But the problem with feral cats is just feeding them doesn't stop the problem or fix the problem. It makes more feral cats, which make more feral cats. I actually right. don't believe they in breathe. trap, neuter, yeah. and release. I believe in trap and euthanize because they're feral cats. But what oh. the fuck do I know? Um, but yeah, we were trying to get her to go away because she would leave little cans sprinkled around the bushes behind the store. It was... <laughs> it's un- but besides the homeless people sleeping back there, she was also another liability. Maybe they ate the cat food. I don't know. Maybe she was feeding the homeless. I said, what did the couple do with all the little... I don't know. I'm hoping they burned the pies on like a funeral pyre to the gods or something. But they may have just thrown them in the trash wherever they were. Who knows? In the black hole they went. I just, I'm trying to picture in my mind what scenario would exist to get that contract with Petco to collect the little black bag. God, I don't know. Like, I mean, you walk in and you're like, I, I need, I need all the dead animals. <laughs> like, how do you even Maybe they go about them that? into like cool strippers. <laughs> like that one It's person. just, it's such like a weirdo thing. I don't know. It is crazy now that you pointed out that they found someone to to bid on a job of removing carcasses from Peco freezers on a regular basis. Discreetly. Yeah, discreetly. Discreetly on a regular basis. Yeah. So they would come in the front door, find a manager, but would leave by the back door with a little box of little tiny black bags. It was very strange. This whole place. Oh, we got robbed once. It was pretty yeah. cool. Well, so were you person- there? Yeah, I was there, but I- <laughs> no. I was the shift after. They had, like, put, like, a... This is crazy. Like, a 55-gallon tank in a cart, like, with the the ass in hanging out. A bunch of, like, decor and a filter and a bunch of shit for it. And then were pretending like they were thinking about paying or whatever. And then just ran out the back door into the warehouse and then out the back door onto the loading dock. And then just ran away. They didn't go out the front door. They just, like, tried to sneak off out the back door. And they were successful as far as I'm aware. I don't think the police ever bothered to go get them for a 55-gallon tank and some decor. But I was like, if you were going to steal something from somewhere... Why would you steal such that? Such a big thing, A. And then it's not expensive. So what are you going to... They just really wanted right. a, They just really wanted a fish tank. That's the answer. <laughs> I feel like... You could, you could have that fish tank. Yeah, I mean, they work for <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, it's just such a rando thing to Right, and they didn't steal. get, like, extra stuff for multiple fish tanks. They got it for one fish tank. They just wanted one fish tank, and then they ran away. It was very strange. Every once in a while, you would get, you know, a employee that sucked ass, and so they would... You basically have to... It's like being at a reptile show where you have to, like, grill someone, be like, hey, have you ever had snakes before or lizards or whatever? Mm-hmm. But it's worse because everyone, the answer is almost always no. So there's definitely been times I've like chased somebody down and tackled them in the parking lot because they bought a clownfish in a one gallon glass jar. Oh no. Like they were going to fucking finding Nemo this. Wait, isn't a, a clownfish expensive? I mean, they're not that bad. They're like 50 bucks at the time, but they're tropical saltwater fish it needs a fully cycled tank it doesn't have to be a full built-out reef tank but it needs to be cycled with live sand and good salt water and good parameters and they were trying to put it in a one gallon glass container that you would quote unquote sell with a goldfish which is also a torture for a goldfish but that thing would have been dead in like 10 seconds i'm like what the fuck is going on here so the guy who actually like bagged that fish up just didn't ask them and they went and got the glass container by themselves Cool. They just asked for Nemo Up first. An employee. Right, but it's it's hard because you're like, you have to fucking mind read and interrogate everyone and then like shut people down way in advance and be like, go get a book first. There's the book section and that doesn't help. And, you know, the care sheet info that we hand out is not that great. We have shit on the store's inventory on the shelves. It's not that great. So you're telling people not to buy stuff and go somewhere else. It's difficult, and I don't ever want to do it ever again. Let me just put it that way. Fuck you, pet stores. 
Although I, I, I still feel like a, a reptile specialty shop, while it has problems, it would be easier. People come there because it's like a destination, right? How many reptile specialty shops are there? There's supposed to be a really nice one up by the Monroe show that we did. We just have managed to oh, make it Briggs out there. Pet store? Briggs, yeah. It's supposed to be really nice other than the blasting of Christian music. So, yeah, Briggs it has other kinds of animals, though. I think so. I don't know. I haven't I haven't been yet, but it's supposed to be a destination pet shop, and it's supposed to be really well run. Yeah, Briggs buys from uh, Cascade Corns. Like, their corn snakes are his corn snakes. So they buy from local breeders, too. But I just heard, thought they sold everything, dog food, whatever. They do, yeah. Yeah, I just mean, like, a destination reptile specialty shop. All they sell is reptiles and reptile products, and they specialize in, like, high-end stuff where you would want to drive there just to see their crazy displays and buy you would be happy to buy a two thousand dollar like correctly priced maybe a little bit of retail bump whatever green tree python that's not well cut there aren't that many in the whole country there might be 20 or something a lot more in florida though obviously but if you had a place like that you would you would be able to like control the messaging very well and your customer might be a little more nuance to begin with so you wouldn't have to explain to them how to take care of a leopard gecko for the 13th time that day because they probably already know that's why they're coming to a reptile specialty store so in conclusion i think they have their problems big box stores but like we already said they're nicer than scary mom and pop stores obviously less nice than reptile specialty stores correct and not obviously not as good as a breeder because nobody's as good as a breeder because a breeder as full control over the whole process. They definitely serve as like an exposure medium and they serve communities that need feeder insects and feeder rodents that couldn't otherwise support like a whole, you know, high end reptile shop too. Right. Yeah. They're definitely serving a purpose in the community. If we could get a few tweaks, like can we please take the the heat rock off the market? Like, there's no reason ever for that heat rock or the red lights. Do you know what um, I heard? But they though? sell a lot of them. I heard that they don't want that. It's Zillow or fucking whatever. The reptile company is like, this is my lineup right. of products. You must carry all of them or you won't carry my products. So, correct. I don't know if that's still true. Yeah, they definitely are making great money selling the wrong products first and then selling you the correct products after you educate yourself a little. Mm -hmm. So they're double dipping on every customer and they're not sorry about it. So I don't see them coming off the market anytime soon, but it would be it would be nice to see those heat rocks get the fuck out. Get the fuck out. Get the fuck out. I did find out that... um... Uh, cytosine beak and feather disease, which is caused by a circovirus in parrots, is tested for by every every parrot that is sent to a peco is tested for it from the vendor. For That's amazing. It. And I think the same true for PetSmart, but I don't have like official, quasi official confirmation. So every single one is tested. So if people just got you know a corn snake with crypto or a leopard gecko with crypto and just started to complain about it, they would they don't care. The amount of money is irrelevant to these people. The animals are there not to make a lot of money off of, but have people come in and then waste money on a dog toy or remind them to buy their dog food there where the margins are better. The animals are just there for fun mostly, entertainment, quote unquote value for kids, and they suck right. you in with the dry goods, right? That's where all their money is. Absolutely. So they would be happy to probably test stuff if people complained about it enough and made it a thing. So Yeah, I mean, it's like when you go to the grocery store and they put all the key items in all the corners. So you have to go through all the other aisles to get to them. Yeah, so they put all the dog food and the cat food in the back of most Petco's and PetSmart's. So you need to get your dumb dog some pro-plan hurt tummy formula because he's a little bitch. So on the way there, you have to pass all this other shit, dog toys, outfits, hats, and then your kids will get distracted <laughs> A by... A new little Polly. <laughs> <laughs> your kids might get distracted next to the leopard geckos, and you might get sucked into buying a whole setup for $400. That's half yes. correct. And then you're like, fuck, why do we come here? So it's the exact <laughs> same time. setup. That is my experience every time I go with my kids. 
Yeah, so you know exactly what's going on, and they do too. So they don't care that much if you don't do or do not buy a leopard gecko. They would rather just avoid the bad press of a leopard gecko with crypto. So I think they would do that if people just wanted to ask for it because they already yeah, do people it care. for other stuff. Yeah. Do you want to start a pet store, Jana? They do not. Um, maybe. Maybe I do. I, I mean, we I, talked I about it like 10 episodes ago that everyone kind of wants to start a pet store. Anything stand out to you from Nobody's Safe? I felt like it was less safe than than the first one. So that was a benefit. I didn't feel as safe as I did with the yeah. first. It wasn't like a warm, cozy episode. Mm-mm. I feel like they're they're finding their groove a little bit. I, I felt like the rapport was better. I, I I enjoyed this week's much better than the other one. It was more on par with their... They also called me smart at some point, so that was pretty cool. <laughs> they did call you smart. <laughs> yes, you were mentioned by name. Oh, I thought fuck. that was pretty cool. And I'll they did suck drop anybody's podcast. dick if you call me smart. Easy. 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 Wait, wait. <laughs> did, hold the phone. That is my job. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, let me just. I will. Again. I will suck the D if you call Jessica smart. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's do it. This all works out. No, yeah, it was very uh, nice. I think we got shouted out a couple times, so uh, we don't deserve anything. Uh, and anything we get, we appreciate. Thank it. you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much if you are listening, Chris or MJ. Okay, so we missed this episode. It was Sean Gray on the Reptile Gummo podcast, and it's from like fucking twelve days ago now. I listen to it. I fucking love it when Sean Gray's on. And I know he doesn't know who I am or care, but I always really love like industry temperature checks. And no one would know better how it's doing than a show promoter who's exposed to like the dumb opinions of hundreds of vendors and can see the head counts at his shows. And so who else is a better gauge of the trajectory of how the market's doing than a Sean Gray? What do you think about that? I think I did not watch this episode, Fuck! but it is on my to-do list. And I <laughs> oh, think... you bitch. Okay. You bitch. She didn't do her homework. I did most of my homework. Yeah, good job. I really want to listen to it. I would love to... I mean, maybe we need to interview our guy, our oh, Jeff. fuck. Yeah, I mean, if you would let us. Well, at the very least... Okay, everybody, we have a show in two weekends. Yeah. Yeah. So... At the very least, one of us will have to catch him and get a head count for the show when it's over. Because yeah, Because Sean Gray was giving head counts for some of his shows. And they were actually less than or the same as the head count for Hillsboro, which was supposed to be 7,000. Oh, okay. So. Whoa. Whoa. Yes. Whoa. And they were talking right. a lot about like. The April show? Yeah. Was 7,000? No, not Monroe. No, the April. Oh, yeah, April. Yeah, Hillsboro. Hillsboro. Yeah. Okay, whoa. Yeah, and that was interesting. And so I would like, if we can get a headcount, that'd be great from our yeah, show. Yeah, absolutely. I can get a headcount because he really likes the person I've been with. Like, Tell her to wink aunt, at him and, is, yeah, and flick his her aunt hair. Yeah, obsessed with her jewelry. So he always <laughs> stops by, actually, and talks to us and, like, gets something for his aunt. Yeah, and if you could trick him into giving you, like, the first day headcount and second day headcount, that'd be cool, too. Because they were talking about headcounts. They were talking about... Certain locations having, they opened up an extra room because they booked that location 15 months ago. And that made that show do really poorly for the people who were booked into the room. Because the, sh- the head count to the whole show was really low. They were talking about people coming to the show because they know it exists. But people just not buying anything but feeders and then leaving. A return to non-COVID selling frenzy times where you actually have to like really get out there and hustle and promote your own stuff in advance. And all the good stuff. The juicy tips, the juicy secrets. Everybody needs to check it out. Reptile Gumbo Podcast with Sean Gray. Okay. General check. I'm, mess- I'm messaging him right now. Oh, Jeff. Mm-hmm. Or do we want day each day count and we don't need him to come on to our post show? Oh, yeah. I don't want him on the post show. Sorry. Was that confusing you? No, you were not. I was just simply clarifying. Yeah. I think we're just going to want to be sleepy and talk about it with some context from him. But if we wanted to invite him on six months from now or something just to talk about how he does things i would love i think that or would be how a great he idea. thinks the trajectory is going over time or any of that would be good oh i did send him my like location request did you send your yes i did okay and he was like i can accommodate that i'm like thanks put me in the back fucking room that'd be fine just don't let anything weird happen please so channel check that out everyone else should listen to it it it's it sounded bad they were like, we have too many vendors on the wait list. 
We had vendors canceling because they couldn't afford the gas to drive to the location because they knew they were only going to make whatever, $1,000. So if they spend 400 in gas in hotels, it would stop being worth it. So that was like, whoa, heavy. So I listened to an hour of this MJ, and I never found where he called him out on the length of his yeah, intro. Yeah, it was way at the end. You didn't have to do it. But So Samir was on MJ's podcast two weeks ago now. But the most important thing he said to MJ was that his intro was too long. Do you think MJ's intro is too long? Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's like 12 <laughs> to 15 minutes every time of the same shit. Yeah. Chris Eaton has a lot of sponsors and a lot of advertiser intro type crap, but he spreads it out throughout the episode. And I know that MJ is live, so he doesn't necessarily have that luxury, but he could like pop it in. He could pause and pop it in. You know what I mean? And so it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be as overwhelming. And like, you try to like skip through it, but it's hard, (laughs) you know, like, because you don't want to miss the beginning of the interview. So I think that that is solid advice for MJ. MJ, I love you. If you're listening, you're amazing. Keep doing what you're doing. But if you could do like an intro, bring on your guests, talk for, you know, 10 or 15 minutes and then do a plug for one of your sponsors and then talk for 10 or 15 more minutes and then do a plug for one of your sponsors, I would actually listen to your plugs rather than just skip it all. How do you feel? <laughs> I don't mind it too bad because I don't care, but... It's it's very much a, a problem when you're front loading all of your commercials right at the beginning because no one pays attention to them at, at all. I like if I'm listening on the download, I usually skip it to wherever it looks like a person is on. Yeah, it's 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 not good for like retention either. So if people might just leave, they won't even bother to skip. That's why sprinkling in is good and not having what he should do maybe charge more from his sponsors and have like a longer spot like you know he only spends like 30 seconds or whatever on a sponsor yes so he could be like i'm gonna talk about cold blood cafe for two minutes and then have like a two minute ad break three times but it's like a more expensive contract i don't know but he has seven thousand episodes so maybe he's fine I feel like his intros were getting shorter and since the Samir episode. Do you think that? They're still long, but they're definitely still... They might be getting shorter. What do you think? I haven't looked at any other episodes for this week. Sorry, guys. I'm doing math in English, and it was a holiday weekend, so I had family in town. So once again, I'm a bitch. My name is Mud, and... Jessica can sigh loudly about how no, it's okay. It's been, I'm not keeping up. It's been crazy. Obviously, we're recording this on Wednesday. Normally, the podcast will be up. Right. Normally, now. we record either Saturday or Monday. So it's been crazy. It's been crazy. All right. So, did you look at Morph Market at least? Okay. So a little something you and the listeners can learn together. Jana doesn't like change. <laughs> so when I figure out a system and I like the system, I don't like it when it changes. So they're going to do push notifications for saved searches, which is something we've discussed in the past as something that I do want personally. Mm-hmm. It's not out yet, but it's coming. It's coming soon. But all the changes that they're doing right now with like the indexes and stuff, I went on the Morph Market to do my little like peruse and... I may have cried because it was real different and it was confusing and and I was like I I just I just can't morph market this week because I had so much you else going on that I could turn it back just... into old mode if you really Oh, you can? To. Yeah. How do you do that? There's a little button at the top. It says return. But there's a little return. It says like, like return to old decrepit mode. Yeah, I don't Oh, return to old index. <laughs> I love you, Jessica. <laughs> I know. I actually did turn my back. Most of the stuff where my market does is fine, but this one was a little tough because it's just to even see the gene you want. If it's not on the first page, you have to search for it. You can't actually scroll to find it. You have to actually stop what you're doing, type it in. Okay, but now I returned it. And now how do I? Oh, it says try new design. It okay, will probably... it, I mean, it was just it was a little overwhelming, and I. And I just kind of freaked out. <laughs> and then if you notice on the Morph Market post about it, there's a bunch of complainers underneath. And then John makes a comment later. It's like, I, I hear you guys complaining. 
just try it. It's hard. <laughs> it's like holding Change people's is hard. hands. Yes, yeah. yes. I, I think that it's good. And I love that John is constantly improving it. And I love that the new feature coming out. I, I literally, we were just talking about wanting this feature. Good things, but change is hard. It was real different. And then the layout was different. And my brain just kind of cried a little. But I think once I get the hang of it, I'm actually going to really like it. And I love that there's a picture. I mean, I, I really want to love it. And I'm going to love it. I just, it hurt my, it hurt my feelings a little. <laughs> I just put a picture in the notes. This is Dave Palumbo's baby that was just born. It's a blue line sharp. And blue line is a polygenically selected lineage of sharp albino and boas. I want you to look at that and tell me what you think about that picture. Do you have a boner? I'm looking, Do you have a boner? I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it and I have a boner and then I'm waiting for you to tell me what's wrong with it. Because it's so pretty. What's wrong with it? Is it, I mean, is it okay? Yeah, I mean, they're fine. They just have the eyeball issue. But this one is, does not have the eyes. eyeball issue. I thought it, it was just like really nice example. So I wanted to show it to you and see if you would think it was nice. It's, it's so pink. Absolutely it looks purple stunning. or something. Yeah, it's absolutely stunning. How come they can't do it with the other thing that doesn't have the eyeball issue? Like a different line of albino. It probably could. So all this is is like a lineage that's been so selected for color. If it was not. So damn hot. Yeah. It's if it was making not, me drool a little. <laughs> this quality of purpliness might be a sharp only thing but probably not some of the very nicest t pluses could probably look like that eventually too but they would definitely not look as you know they would still have some melanin it would look different but they they can also be very pink and dark looking so what would something like that go for fuck five thousand six thousand and that's just a Old I made my lady balls hurt. <laughs> an old recessive and selective breeding. Wow. That goes back to help me out. John Steely, the guy yet on Oh, William Philippeck. Yeah, William Philippeck and his we need to be line breeding better in ball pythons. Oh, he sent me I a just, message like, and he says he listened to our episode and he thought it was nice. Oh, thank you. Thank you, William. I yeah. apologize. I am in better form today. He might like backhand you at a show, though. He's like, bitch. <laughs> but then he'll hug you, know you what? after that. So it'll be, it'll you know what? I, if I ever meet you at a show, I owe you a drink. <laughs> and I will buy you food first. And we will Are make it right. Are you going to Arlington? I am thinking I'm going to Arlington. Oh, fuck. All right. Are you going to Arlington? or is that Well, gonna... now that I'm going, I think I'm yeah. going. I just need so to find we, a uh, doggy babysitter. Yeah. Be gone and, the yeah. And then um, maybe we'll ca- grab some clips for like Instagram or the Facebook group or something. And we'll do some like. I mean, if we're real drunk, we could do, <laughs> do a live from the show. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. I'll have Alex. So I don't know how, how and... crazy it can be. But... No, I didn't mean it need to be crazy. I just meant maybe we could catch some quick interviews and stuff oh yeah i'd like to do that i was just definitely thinking of doing an like a episode fun live. as a live oh yeah yeah that would be really fun um i don't ever get sloppy drunk in public so like one drink <laughs> and jana is is fun <laughs> so it'd probably just be like one or two drinks and then i'd be a real know, fun but time there's gonna be a bunch of naughty boys hearing about bj duty Sliding <laughs> shots That's to right. you at the you you will just uh, give them your RBF. <laughs> Maybe William <laughs> will uh, take those shots for me. I mean, it's going to be fine. It's going to be a good time. Just don't get I, roofied. I you have to have a have guard duty or something. Oh, you know, you got to drink that shit right away. You don't leave it sitting out. I mm-hmm. I got it. We're good. Mm-hmm. You get roofy Chris Eaton though. He seems to like it. <laughs> I would pay to see that. That would be good. That was enough news for me. We've had like 1,700 clutches. Have me? You, yeah. I feel like you've had two come out and be revealed on Instagram. Yeah, I've had like... new. I put away like six or eight in the last two weeks. I filled up a whole rack this week. <laughs> Sweet. Are you... Yeah, I've had a lot, of, a lot of clutches. I made a sugar clown male. Nice. Which you is did very ex- I did it. So he's going to stick around until I prove out if my bananas calico. Current, yeah, my current one if he's calico. If he's calico, then the sugar clown will get sold. But if not, I'll keep him around and maybe throw him as like backup. 
um, just for funsies. They're pretty expensive, even as males. So him growing up in my rack is not doing me any harm. Like, he'll just increase in value. Did so, you hit any other clowns in that clutch? I did not hit any other clowns in that clutch. Oh, so have you had any but, other clowns anywhere else yet? No, that's my one and only visual clown. I've hit one visual pied and one visual clown in my breeding history. We all get a little slow clap for how sad that is. (laughs) So he is staying for now and he's really pretty. And the picture that I posted of him does him no justice. Um, I'll have to post some more of like his side. I'll have to put him on like a mirror or something because he's got just really gorgeous. It's like, uh, it's hard to explain. Like the side that he has, you know how like spider has the... Mm, help me words are hard well i don't know what yours looks like but mine it's like they're wavy like the bottom is trying to bleed up yes so it'll be waved but edged in black but it's not calico white nothing else about it is calico-y but you can see like calico is asking it to be flamey and it just needs yellow belly to like color yeah yeah it's real pretty and and i really I, I'm real jazz that I hit that because, yes. yeah, because I threw two males to it and the sugar cloud didn't even get the the last lock and I was like, yeah, I'm probably just not gonna hit that and I sold the sugar het clown because I have better het clowns anyway. So it was just like a total a total win and I I needed a win. So he's gorgeous. He's in my rack. Um, I hit some really gorgeous um, super gravel stuff. I think I talked about that last episode. Mm-hmm. Some other clutches that just like mean nothing super let's write home about it. Yeah, what did what did you tell me about this tri stripe? Is he a female maker? Girl, I'm not sure yet, but I popped obviously the normal first. He was sold to me as a male maker. Or I guess he was sold to me just as a banana, which you obviously assume okay. it's a male maker. Correct. Yes. So I popped the non banana first expecting to be the only female and it was a male correct and then i popped the other two bananas and they were both females so there's two more bananas in so the sexy one on your instagram is female yeah holy shit i know because i was like you were like this is awesome and i'll take it for a dollar which is usually what you say when something's really hot and i was like whatever you got a sausage fest (laughs) that's from robocop Oh. I'd buy that for a dollar. I'd buy that for a dollar. I haven't seen Robocop since I was like <laughs> Oh my five. god, just watch it. It's so good. Okay, I'll have to watch it again. Because literally I think I was like five and I was like probably watching. Yeah, it's not for five year olds people. No, but- like there was like m- movies we weren't allowed to watch, even though our older siblings were allowed to watch them. So we would like sneak in and like peek from the doorway. So you don't really get to see the whole movie. <laughs> I mean, you like, you know, the thing and Starship Troopers, right? Oh, silence. Radio silence. Radio silence. Roger, oh, Roger. Fuck. Janet. <sighs> I'm sorry. You can't take me anywhere. I will send you a list of movies, specifically the Verhoeven movies, because they're like, they're commentary on society. So Robocop yes. is not just about blowing people up. It's about corporations infiltrating government and then getting what they want. Even if that means that normal people are hurt, but it's also about blowing people up. So it's very good. Starship Troopers is the best anti-fascist movie of all times. Did you know? Did you watch Starship Troopers recently? No. No, fuck. So back to ball pythons. If I didn't like fuck up those pops, you know, when they're kind of slimy, then he's a female maker. Which, is whoa, because that is that is a hot snake, the one in your hand. So is it banana, black pastel, fire, and thingy? No, it's fire thingy. So it's whatever the fire complex is in the mom. That's with black pastel. So the thing in my hand, I think it's just banana, black pastel. There's a. It, are you sure that's it? Yeah. Are you sure it doesn't have the fire thingy in it? No, because the fire thingy when it gets a black pastel, it makes them flame up. Because I have a normal black pastel, whatever it is. They get like really big white flames on black pastel. And it's always literally like kooky and turned, all the saddles. So her saddles are really regular. So I think it's just a black pastel. There are two Let's... banana pins. And one of them might be fire thingy because it's like a weird color. And then there's a black pastel banana pin 
thing that could be fire thing or not. I can't tell. It's crazy looking. Check it out on Instagram. Yes. What's crazy to me, and I know it's not crazy, is just how heteri stripey they look. Some of them already. Yes, yeah. they very much do. That's why I was so sad for you because I was like sausage fest. I mean, like, oh yeah, you got a normal the whole back. <laughs> yeah, it does suck. It sucks there was no like just black pastel because I'm I've seen cinnamon tri stripes and they're pretty dope. But what's better than that? Black pastel tri stripes. But if yeah. I other... know you don't like banana. I know, but oh, well, I mean, they so look pretty, pretty nice. That's so fine. <laughs> they do look real nice. So shut the fuck up and keep that banana black pastel. Yeah, if if they are, there are indeed four of them, I don't necessarily need all four. So I'll have something expensive to sell. So thank God for that. Right, right, right. Well, and do you want pin tri stripes? What a pin! I gotta look that up. Why well, the dad is a pin? Pin. Oh, that pin is from the dad. You're right. Pin. It doesn't right. it help it a lot. Let me put it that way. Because I mean, it, it seems like it was like it cancels each other out, right? Or does it help? Well, it doesn't help because it's it's they will still tri stripe, but the little extra stripe will be pinstripe sized. And okay. The top stripes will be pinstripe sized, and then the the little side stripes will disappear towards the back. And on a banana, it looks like almost nothing as an adult because it's so low contrast to begin with. On adult banana. Uh, so it right. doesn't look that great. I wonder if it would look better as like a black pastel pinstripe, tri-stripe. Because then the little... Because black pastel and banana play really well Right, together. it would give dots to the little side dots. Correct. Because he doesn't have very many dots. He has a couple, but not a lot. But if you had like a little row of, you know, ellipses going down the snake, and then a row of ellipses of banana dots on the top maybe that would look fun i don't know i'm not in charge uh, yep yeah. my mail was from sterling nelson and he was part of the like texas relief auction that was on morph market so i didn't oh. like think about it that hard i was just like i want to donate some money to and, cool and, texas I, like people. and I like try stripe and so like, nelson's a good guy sounds great so i bid on it and it was as always criminally underpriced on an auction and i got it and now you're I, using it. Yeah, I like it. He's good. I just, it's something like to work around is pinstripe because it's not. The only thing I, I think about, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, the pinstripe GHI Mojave is darker and has a more consistent gray side than the GHI Mojave. Say that again. Okay, so the GHI Mojave pin is darker and has a more distinct backstripe. Like it's a whole. Stripe along. I don't think I've ever seen that combination. Just a second. <laughs> it's actually better than a GHI Mojave to have pin in it, which is crazy. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It is better. It's darker and the stripe is stripier. That's hot. I would buy that. Mm hmm. So that's why I've never been like pissed that pin is floating around in my collection, even though it doesn't work in some combos. Like a jigsaw is not that exciting. And a GHI pin is a, I, okay, we don't. I don't know most people choose to go without it, you know? Yes, but there are times when it does better. Like, I actually like really like Jigsaw Clowns. So I think a Jigsaw plus GHI might make something 1 plus 1 equals 4 versus the GHI. I don't Mojave. Google Jigsaw Clown. <laughs> make sure you put in ball python. <laughs> yeah, that's a different thing. <laughs> Different movie. <laughs> I don't like clowns. <laughs> that was I did not need that in my life. Oh, a jigsaw clown is gorgeous. I know it looks like a constellation of stars or something because it, it really it like does. It's beautiful. Pops out the and it's like a gray color. So there's stuff to do there with pinstripe clowns that we haven't even started to do. And because it hurts, kind of doesn't hurt that much. I don't mind keeping a pinhead clown. I don't fucking it's fine. We'll figure oh, that's out good to know. what to do yeah. with it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll figure but out I want to know in the future. what is like the pin GHI Mojave tri stripe look like or the pin GHI Mojave puzzle look like? I don't yeah. know. With... These are all good questions. Mm -hmm. So he's okay that he's pin. It's okay that these females have pin. I'll figure out what to do with him. Okay. Yeah. Hell yeah. Also, I got it. My ARS reckon I made Chris put it together because he's a team player. 
And I had two broken tubs, and they sent replacements at no cost, and that was very good. I have, I have like, three broken tubs that I need to message them about. Oh, it's been a long time. Did you just start finally digging around there? Yeah, I just started it. I got to put it together in the next two, two weeks-ish. Yeah, I had to move up my 2021s. Some of them were too big, and some of them were fine still in, like, baby racks. But I was like, everybody's getting the upgrade. Here we go. Yeah, I really need to move up my 2021s, but I need to get my, my building going. It should be going in the next month, I think. I'm officially working on that project now that my girls' rooms are done. Are you so finishing stay it yourself? Tuned. Yeah, I'm going to finish it myself, and then hopefully he'll install the heat pump. If he doesn't, I can pay someone to do it. But all that needs to go up is like the wall boards and then the plumbing, the electrical's done, the lighting's working, the literally like insulation's done. It's plumbed, but I need to buy a sink and the heat pump needs to go in and the wall boards need to go up and that's it. All right. Good job. You're going to do it. It's going to happen in the next four to eight weeks. <laughs> do you have school but you have my enough, ass. Oh, is it? Are you... Yeah. Uh, Learning math it's, good. It's not hard. It's not difficult. It's time consuming. And my kids are all home. And so it is what it is. And it's more time than I thought it would take. But it's not challenging. It's just time consuming. All but right. I'm getting it done. I'm doing well in both classes. I'm on week three, midway through me- week three. And um, is it an eight week course? It is. It is an eight week course. And I am passing both classes wonderfully and i think we're gonna do it just fine it's just it's not my favorite but i knew it wouldn't be anyway because they're crappy you know freshman classes and my kids are home so i mean i mean literally there was like no there was gonna be no enjoyment no matter what you know mm-hmm. are you so. still going to school in the fall or are you are you yeah i'm stressing you out and, okay. no no i'm taking three classes in the fall i'm only taking two right now but those will be in person. All right. <laughs> Take a look. <laughs> are they? Yeah, actually, the weekend I get back week from Arlington. Are they? This is a dumb personal question, but it's totally fine. The weekend I get home from Arlington that Monday is when classes start, so I'll get home Sunday night, real late <laughs> from Arlington, and then I'll get to show up to class the next morning. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Hardcore love is of it the like reptile a, hobby. Is it there. like a red eye? You're seeing like red eyes coming back from the East Coast. Like, are you landing at midnight? <laughs> I don't know. I haven't gotten my tickets yet, but probably something gross like that. Yeah, doing good. Doing good at school, but some other things are falling through the cracks, like the building. But it's going to get done. They should. My goal is to have everybody moved out there by September 1st for the new season, even though we don't do seasons, but. That's in my brain. That's what I would like to see happen. Do you have somebody who's supposed to be building follicles that would be either inhibited by being moved out there that you have to keep inside or like, what is your follicle situation right now? Real quick before we finish so up this party. I normally ultrasound like every four to six weeks. And I think it's been eight or 10 weeks <laughs> since I ultrasounded. <laughs> nice um no maybe it's been eight weeks i think it's been eight weeks and so i was hoping to do it in the next week or two and just kind of check in on everybody i'd have to look at my sheet so last time i ultrasounded i had a clown my black breast cell spider clown was at 20 my spider hip hide was at 20 my hypo head dg was at 18 and a couple of other things were around 20 so i had one two three four five six seven seven girls that were between like 15 and 20 last time i ultrasounded so i'm assuming or hoping that they'll be around 30 now i don't know we'll see and then everybody else was just hanging out between 10 and 12 fuckers (laughs) Yeah, I haven't ultrasounded either, but I think all the ones that were in the teens or whatever are acting like they're reabsorbing. So I don't care. I'm moving. Fuck them. They'll go uh, next, mine, next Yeah, year. mine don't seem like they're reabsorbing. They just seem like they've, they're they going to go later. And I do have a maybe 70. Well, I have my nine stack 
V70 Sea Serpent from you. And I have a another rack that's got eight V70s. So if those girls are further along and I don't want to move them out to the snake shed, I can leave them in one of those racks and leave that in my room. Because that, that room's going to become my room. Are I'm you still keeping sleeping. your king snakes? Uh, I haven't decided. Um, okay. If I, I might keep one and then if I'm going to keep king snakes, I might get something more exciting than what I have. Because there's all kinds of really cool king snake morphs. Mm-hmm. And so if I'm going to be breeding them, I might as well get something better than just black and white. <laughs> That's how they come out of the wild, so it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Um, I haven't decided. I think, I think yes, I'm keeping them, and I think I'll try again. But if it's unsuccessful again, then I won't try to breed that trio again. Just give them a longer brumation this time. I'm sure it'll be successful. Oh, yeah. I mean, they'll go down probably in October mm-hmm. like around you know Halloween or whatever yeah I mean yeah I, I'm gonna keep them and yeah I'll probably try to breed them again just for funsies but if I'm gonna keep kings I will probably invest in a trio of something that really interests me in the breed but I like having king snakes what around. interests you do you know what interests you yet or are you still thinking about it there's some like king snakes with reds I don't know. I was Reds. browsing. Don't mix king snakes, Jana. Don't mix king snakes. Yeah, don't go br- get a Brooks king snake and mix it to your cow kings. Come on now. No, 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 no. I would get a trio of Brooks. Oh, I thought you meant like you were buying another trio of cow kings that is better versions of cow kings to breed to get rid of your male and breed them over your older females with like a new male. No, 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 no. I would keep what I have oh. because they're they're a full size. But I would get a trio of youngs and raise them up. And oh, then once they kind. were big enough to eat baby, baby snakes, mm-hmm. then I would get rid of the bigger trio. Oh. Well, and if the trio doesn't produce this summer, then I'll get rid of the girls and keep the boys because he's more handleable. Mm-hmm. He's not yeah. a total jackass that tries to eat me every you don't time like I open his. Morphs or cow king morphs? I, I'm going to look into it. It's it's just that uh, I had looked into it previously and I don't remember what it was that I had liked, but there was some really cool shit and it, what I have is boring compared to that, if that makes sense. Yeah, I like the the Hypermel morph. It, 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 some people call it a ghost. It looks like a shatter corn snake, but in a king snake form, which I already like shatter, so that's pretty good. And I, I mean, like I was, are these the, the like king morphs yeah, or is this these, any this king? is specifically cow king morphs. And I like the ink drop cow kings where the white is everywhere and the black bands have become just a circle that looks like it's been dripped on top. There's a lot of cow kings that are polygenic that are very cool. Uh yeah. too. But it's hard to be like, yeah, I want to do this polygenic look and then just go get that male and then run it over your normal ass females. You won't get stuff that you'll get mi- a mix of stuff, but you won't get anything that looks like the lineage that you're trying to go for. So that's how I was like, Oh, oh if you yeah, got, yeah. Like, no, younger... no. Yeah, no, I wouldn't just use them on the females. I would ax the whole project and start over. Yeah. I mean, you could use like, if you've got a morph cow King, like if you decided you liked bananas or something, I, I do not. I do not. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like chocolate in, in yellow color. Now, I'm obsessed with uh, splotched Nelson's milk snakes. Obsessed. It's okay. So hot. Are you going to get some Nelson's milk snakes? Oh my God. I don't need any more species. <laughs> She's totally going to do uh, it, guys. Then they're so expensive. Hot but that's what. I'm, it's like helpful I just, like the I t like plus there's... nelson's splashed oh damn i just i mean like there's like the gray banded <sighs> king snakes that are yeah. pretty sexy yeah get some of those i mean like i just there's other kinds of king snakes that i i find visually more attractive and or therai i really want therai too do you see that king snake i posted to the discord it was a great a wild caught gray band and it was one of the kinds that was zero orange but which is cool too, but it was a version of it that was super dark. So it was like slate gray with black saddles, but each black saddle was bordered in white like it normally is. 
So it was this like three toned gray thing. And it was, it was the most exciting thing I've ever seen. Join the discord, everybody for the hottest content. Facebook is reactions to the episode discord. It's for that hot newness. Okay. Maybe I'll it is, I just mean that there's, there's ones that are like just visually appealing that I think would make pretty things because it's show fodder. So, I mean, it would make better show fodder than just a black and white. Not that there's anything wrong with the black and whites. I just think that I could do. You want to deal with all the force feeding and stuff? I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Yeah. That's the only problem with those desert kings is they're little shits. They all want to eat lizards when they're born. Well, like there's the albino Le- nouveau leon king snakes. Those yeah. are pretty cool. Yeah, those are like a desert type. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they they're... are very... They're, all of the desert kings I think are fucking sweet. Like the... the... Just the regular desert kings with the green and the black. It's yeah, cool. like the... the yellow... The... The Mex Mex granites and the gra- super granites that are so granite, they're like these little speckly galaxy snakes. Yep. La, 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 la. <laughs> Take me away, Calgon. Woo! Yes. So, you know what I mean? I mean, there's like just other things out oh, there yeah. that I'm like, Cal That's Kings. The, my number one problem with Cal Kings is their fucking bad attitude where they're like, all the things are my dinner until I decide otherwise. And I, I had Cal Kings while I was working at Petco. Um, that somebody left at the store. That was my short foray into cow king keeping. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so it's just like, there's some cool things and maybe I'll do those instead. It's it's hard to know. Real talk. I'm picking some snake teeth out of my hand right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to get those out or they really start to hurt. <laughs> I know. I've been like the corn snakes are all... Even though it's like not time, some of them are on like a weird schedule, so they're laying eggs. So some of them are like hangry. Oops. Well, yeah, for sure. So funny story, everyone else, because Jessica knows this story. I got bit by a snake, and it was only probably like I got probably only been bit at this point like a dozen times, and it was a couple of days later, and we were recording one of our first podcasts. And I was complaining to Jessica, and I was like, you say you don't hurt after a few days. And she's like, oh, you've got teeth in there. And I'm like, what? <laughs> no, I don't. Shut up. And she's like, yeah, you got to pop those teeth out or they still hurt. Because normally after the, I mean, after like 10 30 minutes. minutes yeah. yeah. I mean, like, even if it's bruised real good, it just doesn't hurt anymore. And you don't care about it anymore. And this was like days later and it was still aching. And you're like, you got to pop those teeth out. So I had to cut the freaking teeth out of my hands. <laughs> but I had no idea that their teeth could come off in my in my hands. Yeah. And and now I know. And now anytime anybody's like, oh, I'm not bit by a snake and it still really hurts. I'm like, oh, you got teeth in there. <laughs> and I feel like all smart because I know that. Yeah. So snake's teeth are so tip. loose. If, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you've seen them in the water bowls. They'll out. go to drink and they'll like... And they'll spit out a couple of teeth, and so you can pick their teeth out of their water bowls or their uh, poop. Uh, fun fact: I had Amazon tree boas a long time ago. You could their teeth are also really long, so you can actually find their teeth in their poop. Oh, and, and they aren't. Those are some really crazy teeth too. Yeah, and they they don't decay very well in their stomach acid, so you just like get a, a little fucking jar of ATB teeth or. ETB, if you want to do that, and they're actually really long and cool, and that is oh, weird. That's cool. Weird bow effect. <laughs> weird snake people's activity. I'm gonna go dig through some shit, find some good stuff. All right, last update. We're doing a show in two weeks, Jana. What are you bringing for sale? Let me know. What people have money and they want to give it to you. What are you gonna trade for that money? All the things. I'm bringing a lot of proven breeder females. I'm bringing some ready to breed males. I am bringing a lot of hatchlings. A lot. There will be many, many banana hatchlings on my table. What are the um, morphs you're bringing? Or like general ideas like het, G stripe, het, clown? A 66 pos clown. There'll be some. Uh, gravel yellow belly stuff. There'll be het DG stuff, some het clown stuff, like banana het clown. There's that that clutch. I still have to decide which ones have the disco gene in them 
I need to take a picture of that clutch and send it to you. Um, so yeah, like banana disco and she head clown stuff. And what, what are you bringing to the show? I'm bringing a metric shit ton of corn snakes. <laughs> metric shit ton. I have like 150 mm. baby corn snakes or something like that. Oh my right. gosh. You're so, leaving some of that with me, aren't you? Probably after the show. I don't know. Uh, probably. Or they're the pretty easy. Like, so some of them can't go to the show because they're not eating consistently frozen thaw. They're like, they'll skip a meal or they haven't started at all. And I've had to assist feed. So like that, I can't even take that to the show to begin with, right? And then right. I did have a guy message me and ask to do an export. And I'm like, I don't know what the fuck I can export right now. Why the fuck would he want any of An this? export to where? Uh, Taiwan, which is fine. I just, I can't handle it. So I will. Have you done that before? No. If it doesn't go, go at the show, then I could give him that stuff for export. If I wanted to, I don't know if I want to or not. Because I don't know if he'll pay what I would sell them for. Like a, not a true wholesale price, but like a whatever. But yeah, there's probably going to end up being like a clump of males that would I would otherwise wholesale for $50 or something that we can do do a deal with. Maybe you just trade me something. What do you got? You got anything? Me? Yeah. Jana, what do you got? Uh, Give it up. <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to send you a list. I'm formulating a list this week. Yeah, I don't know. Or just like throw them in the trash. I have it like a, a lot of like samey. Don't throw them in the trash. <laughs> don't throw them in the trash, please. Uh, yeah, and and I keep being like I should post some of them to Morph Market, but then we were too busy doing showing, so I didn't want to actually like, take the time to ship something, so I didn't post anything to Morph Market yet. But I'll have. Corn snakes of different flavors, primarily. The b- three boa litters will be ready, but no ball Ooh. python litters will be ready. There's like zero ball python or clutches. Do you have some from last year? I have like a, like a handful, like an inconsequential inco- amount. So, Well, that's good for me. I mean, because I'm going to be selling ball pythons. <laughs> right. It's, it works out that there's I won't have any competition if it's specifically for ball pythons i have like two normal males you know i might just list them for 20 dollars to start and tell them to go and then i have a couple of females that are back on food after laying that will go but i have like still a ton of females that are like eh, i only want to eat every once in a while and i'm like do i take it to a show if it's eating once a month if it skips like do i take that to a show and try to sell it Jana, tell me. What's the moral implications a, of that? I don't have a couple that are doing that to me. They're last year's babies that I'm just like, you gotta go. So, yeah. I mean, I'm just gonna mark them as... Picky eaters? Picky eaters so people know so they don't go to like some poor kid or something. But, yeah, they gotta go and I'll, I, I think I'm gonna just heavily discount them. Yeah, I mean, these are like older females that didn't go last year. I could try oh, them again oh, this year. Oh, they're like adult breeders that you don't need. Yeah, you can bring that and just be like, right? This, but they this some of them have any once a month. They like once a month, or they just they already they got too fat because they were conditioned, and then they didn't go, and now they're like hanging yeah, they're out. Yeah, they're overweight. That's totally fine. Yeah, yeah just but, be honest. Uh, yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, just I go have, take them like and be honest. People oh, are gonna buy them. A bunch of those fucking things, actually. Like I might buy some of those things, <laughs> but they're no good. No, they're no good in your snake room. I don't know. Do you want a single gene mystic? Come on, no. I might. You don't. You don't want that. I'll trade it for a a kiki. (laughs) (laughs) Dream dream on. That's cute. Nice try. Did you buy a kiki yet, though, Jan? So every time I go to buy that kiki, I just get really sick. So I gotta see how I do at the show. Because turns out that money in my savings account keeps leaking. <laughs> you know, because I've been renovating my girls' rooms and they all got new furniture. And I've been buying stuff for the snake shack and stuff for the show. And it's just like, it leaks like a sieve. So I need to see how I do at the show. And then Would I you can consider make a putting choice. stuff on Morph Market in advance of the show? Yeah, just to make up money so you, like, maybe... You can't sell anything for shit at the show, right? 
it might be 60% so, the morph market price unless you were being really firm about it. Right. So um, I definitely need to put up like 100 animals on morph market in the next in the next month but it probably won't happen before the show just because of time restraints you know like i'm doing show prep i'm doing school um i have a trip coming up where i'm leaving the state and i mean i just have a lot of stuff happening so i i do plan to sell quite a bit on morph market in the next six months yeah we'll see how the market does everywhere morph market show it'll all be really interesting to talk about two weeks from now basically yep what will happen? Come say hi at the show if you're local. Um, Jan is still on BJ duty. It's just, <laughs> can you slot yourself in? That's the real question. Yes. Can you slot yourself in or is my card full? Mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I think we did it. I think we did it too. Excellent. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Happy Hanukkah. Take luck. <laughs>Oh. Thank you for the, the slow grind in my butthole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is and it's cool. not a nice slow grind in your butthole. Mm -hmm. No, there was, there was no lube mm -hmm. used. <coughs> Black one got me. Um, <laughs> Quit working in them coal mines. <laughs> I know, I gotta stop. It's just so hard not to.